Especially during challenging times, being your authentic self is important. Learn how to not take things so personal and do the inner reflection that helps you to stay grounded and happy. Joel Young is the creator and curator of the non-personal awareness process known as NPA. Uh, Release things? How would I say that? I would say you profoundly shift your perspective in relation to whatever is going on. Okay which allows you to shift, I'm going to go on, allows you to shift your identity in relation to it, and that changes everything. Oh, I like that. So, and I actually carried around my name tag because I thought it was so interesting. I saw yes. that. I thought that was great. Yes. Oh. Most people come to the MPA process as a simple way to stop taking things personally. Here who's up next when you like my page, Beth Bell Live, and join me each week as I invite a new guest into the mobile recording studio to help in pollinating the planet with love. I'm in sunny San Diego and we're still pollinating the planet with love and I have my special guest here all the way from the UK. Are you ready to go in? Oh yeah, let's do this. Okay, let's do it. Welcome everyone to Pollinating the Planet with Love show. I'm your host, Beth Bell, and I interview guests who are living their passions and purpose and I ask them to share their own life journey lessons and of course those pearls of wisdom that they learn along the way. So today's guest is Joel Young. He is the creator and custodian of NPA, which stands for Non-Personal Awareness, which is a beautifully simple and amazingly powerful approach for letting go of blocks and living your dreams. With over 25 years experience of healing and teaching internationally, Joel brings a depth of wisdom and a great deal of energy and humor to his inspiring talks and seminars. Joel is considered a visionary leader in the field of human consciousness and has been dubbed a 21st century heretic. 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 Sorry, I knew I would say that wrong. <laughs> I had to actually go look it up if I admit it. In just a few years, Joel has seen NPA spread to over 18 countries and has recently started adding certified NPA teachers into the fold. So thank you, Joel, for being here today. This is really fun. My absolute pleasure. I love this place. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's amazing because you actually live in the UK. Yes, I do. Yes. And we're both here for an Evolutionary Business Council uh, conference, which yep. has been fabulous. And, and I had the pleasure of hearing you speak. And it was a really powerful session that I think we all went through. And, and there's a couple of pearls that maybe we'll talk about later that, sure. that I took away. Um, and I think it really w sat with all of us in our mind. So wonderful. But before we get into what you're doing today, I always like to start with, you know, way back when, when you were a young lad, as you might say, um, what did you think you were going to be when you grew up? In the beginning, I was going to be a rock star. Ooh, I like that. And I kind of got there. Yeah. But um, wasn't the ultimate destiny, except that in a way, what I do now is is not that dissimilar when you look at it, which is very interesting to me. Okay. Um, but that was my plan. I started playing guitar when I was eight years old. It was okay. the first time I got my hands on the guitar. And I fell in love with it. And straight away, I started to write songs. Okay. So, uh, right from the beginning, as, as a creator, your own songs, my own songs, just channeled them in. Channeled them in, exactly. Oh. Channeled okay. them in, because musicians or, or creative musicians. I mean, you'd say musicians are creative, but when a real creative musician is inevitably in touch with the divine, because yeah. there's a like you just said, you channel. Often, if I listen to the songs I've written over the years, and I listen back, and they, they um, on an album or whatever, it'd be like, who wrote that? Right. And how old did you say you were? I first picked up guitar when I was eight. Eight, okay. And probably, you know, within the first year, once I could do it, I started to write songs. Um, it's just, it was like yeah. the most natural thing. Yeah, well, um, I have a question about that because okay. you really do channel, I think, as, yeah. a, as a writer. And what do you think as an eight-year-old allowed you to get into that portal to channel? Was um, there a trigger or did it just happen just ever so naturally? I think there's a, cer there's a certain openness. I mean, you can look at the astrology. My astrology is very open. It's like, or, you know, Aries. Aries is like a brand new kid anyway. Yeah. So I've got a childlike okay. essence. Um, I did have, if we go take you back a little bit further, something yeah. I don't often talk about, but it's here to talk about, which is I had a, a near-death experience when I was five. Oh, interesting. And um, I nearly drowned, fell off a boat boat carried on I couldn't swim oh, no. start to go under and the way that I describe it is there were lights and wings 
um, and, and a sense okay. of but the sense and it was really a sense that was as if to say um, not yet okay <laughs> you know it's it, there's more to do yeah um, and off you go and and did you see the light as many people describe? I mean, you said lights and wings, but I mean, did you see like that bright light that you felt was calling you or was it more of like a, a twinkle and wings that sort of lifted you up to bring you back or to keep you here? I think it was, it was angelic is the way to okay. say it. It was like, um, it, it, that's how lights and wings, it was sort of expansive yeah. and there. And it's interesting because it's, it's one of those things where a, I'm five years old, so I have to look at my memory and go, there's going to be overlays there, yeah. you know. But what I do know is the sense was very, very strong in me. And then when I came out, I know that I forgot it for a long time. Okay. It's like I just, it was not, I had the story of nearly drowning in, in myself. I know that there were things that changed then. I know that there were things that happened where I began to be aware of life beyond what was obvious. It's like people aren't talking about what's happening around yeah. me um, but just went into that I'm just gonna survive my childhood and, and, yeah. and get through it well in a way what a gift I oh, mean it yeah. may not have felt that way at the time because it was something very traumatic but it sounds like it was a very eye-opening uh, spiritual awakening and awareness that came through at a young age yeah I think it really was and, yeah. and I think when I do talk about it um, and and people who had similar experiences they do yeah. find that there's something that rests in you um, around death I guess yeah. there's something which um, you sort of seen through the curtain if you like and, and and to what's going on whether all that was there before where it just opened it I don't know the answer to those questions yeah. why the, and it's interesting to me it's like, like life is an investigation you've asked this question it's almost in my own self-inquiry going oh yeah I guess yeah. there is a link I've never really linked that experience to channeling music or or the creativity yeah. of that I don't know but um, yeah it, 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 I'm sure it's key to, to everything that I'm doing yeah. and why I'm on stage in the way that I am and teaching these things yeah amazing wow okay <laughs> so you start channeling music yeah and did you start singing music then? You just were, you were playing music on the guitar. Playing in the guitar. My, my parents would take me to the folk club, local folk okay. club. So it was kind of a musical household. Yeah. Um, but I, w I would just write songs. And, and then when I got to be about, um, I guess it was 10 or 11 maybe, we moved and I wanted to have a band. So I was like, uh, and my entrepreneurial side came yeah. out because no one I knew in the new school could play. Okay. So I said, yeah. I said to my friends, right, you buy a guitar for Chris or get a guitar for Chris. I'll teach you how to play. You get a bass. I'll teach you how to play. Interesting. Okay. Um, we you were had, orchestrating the whole yeah, thing. At I, a young I age. wanted okay. a band. I wanted yeah. a band. And I love it. You, you know, you're going to yeah. have to build it sometimes. Yeah. Another friend, you know, we had a, an old drum kit in in our music, we had a music mm. room. So I taught him a few things, and then he got a whole drum kit for Christmas. Yeah. And then we got someone else who could play the piano already. <laughs> and wow. he had, and he, we had an electric keyboard, so he played the keyboard and he sang initially. And we started off this heavy metal band, age 10, 11. Um, and, uh, and then throughout all of school, we played at school. We would play um, in our town. There was a pub, which was a music pub, okay. and it was run by um, session musicians from London. And you London. were allowed to be in the pub, and even we were with allowed, alcohol? Yeah, we were allowed to go, because we were like this this weird bunch of prepubescent kids, and I was writing songs where I, I didn't even know <laughs> what the words meant that I was yeah. writing. I was writing, yeah. you know, all about love and what was yeah. obviously sex, and I didn't even know it meant that. <laughs> That's funny. But we get up prepubescent, uh, on stage yeah. in the half hour where, where the session musicians would go, okay, right, we need a break, go have a beer. And then, uh, you know, we'd have a chance to get up on that stage and, yeah. and play. Yeah. And so I did that through school and then, um, long story short, different bands, ended up in a band in the late 80s to early 90s, um, which was more in the alternative punky scene. So it was like, because okay. I, and I'd done all the grades in the, the classical stuff as yeah. well. So it was like, I, I was going to play an ordinary chord and I'm not, I wouldn't be seen dead. <laughs> you know, it's got to be angry and yeah. it's got to be, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, progressive yeah. and all the rest of it. Um, but that band was, was fairly successful. We toured and, and okay. we were almost signed by Sony. 
and then I think it was Suede was the band came along and then the industry wanted Suede and we went Suede oh, and it was brutal yeah. it was absolutely brutal it was like the life like, was over yeah but I do often say that if I'd been successful in that industry then I'd probably be dead by now because my okay. my handle on substances was was not good then so if I had the money I probably would have gone that way yeah but out of that that sort of again that's kind of a crisis mm -hmm. out of that I kind of sank back into I went traveling mm. with my what who became my first wife okay. um, you know went traveling with her and and then we came across kind of spiritual ideas and okay. ended up going to um, to seminars to be fair I was a bit of a drag along for those things in spite of everything okay I was a bit you know I'm not sure I want to go and stand in a room and yeah. hands of people <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but that did open things for me and and then I had a, a big experience of connecting to source as you might say okay and I think that shifted it for me plus it was a process oriented thing that was the thing we got into and I found I was really good at helping other people go through things mm. and and traumas or traumas just processing well, that was a process called the, the journey that, okay. um, which was developed by Brandon Bays and the journey and I kind of grew up in my in my world ended up teaching that all over the world and and all sorts but it, it's a, a process which really goes right into the core of the emotions mm. helps you connect okay. to your core um, it works with um, you know you do dialogue with the inner child it's, it's forgiveness it, the, the yeah. goal is forgiveness and over the years I've worked with with tremendous trauma using that process um, like uh, sexual abuse mm -hmm. I was specialized in sexual abuse for years and um, amazing people who had been defined by this for 30 years and and, and they can get to a place where they can not be defined yeah. by it, really let go and truly forgive and then and then move forward without this this in their lives and you know, all sorts of physical healings you know all the stuff that you see in mind yeah. body yeah. arena where you know you clear up the soul the mind everything yeah. and, and the physical body and the manifestation of life um, comes into into greater alignment yeah so that was I love thing. that I, and I want to I feel like we missed some something there because we went from the band not getting signed to like some really really deep inner work so we're going to go to a quick break and when we come back okay. i want to get into how you got so deep so fast okay great blossom bliss products are designed to help empower pure love and purpose in your life it's through the power of words flowers and symbols that our products assist you in creating a blissful life the power of words in our mini mantra word bar necklaces assist you in setting and blossoming your personal intentions. The affirmation cards leverage the power of flowers by providing daily inspiration. And the power of symbols in our life journey bracelets are great reminders of the things that bring us peace, joy, and love. Products are made and blessed in Bali with love by Balinese artisans who work with empowered hearts. When you purchase jewelry with a bee charm, we donate to save the bees. Join us in pollinating the planet with love. Go to our website, BlossomBlissBally.com. Again, that's BlossomBlissBally.com. We're back with Joel Young, and we were just in a really great conversation about how he went from a big disappointment of not getting signed with his rock band that he had really worked hard I think oh, to, yeah. <laughs> to put together over his young <laughs> years but it sounds like they were relatively successful and so you have this big blow and then you went into just a whole different field I mean I know you said you traveled um, but what was the catalyst to like really go into the inward work I think I think there was a huge disappointment again I, I hadn't paid attention in school I'm, I'm yeah. a very bright person and I'm not academic at all and why would I be? Because since I was eight years old, I was going to be a rock mm. star. And it was yeah. really clear to me, and everything was going according to plan. Yes. So to then have it suddenly dashed, and there was, there was just a way that all of us in the band, in that disappointment, and it was made very clear that either we'd have to be something else, and even then really, yeah. it's, it's that kind of industry where we know who you are, we got close, now you're not what we want. Yeah. Relationship yeah. is over. Well, this is a, a question that I'm kind of even surprised I'm asking, but it makes me wonder when a, when a child comes in with such vigor about a, a really clear idea if if you have ever considered or if you think it's to be true that you may have been some kind of rock star in a previous life 
that brought you that, you know, but it was just a catalyst to get you to that next evolution in this life. I don't know, is that something you would believe in or subscribe to? I'm not sure I'd be a rock star in a previous life, is it? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I would say that, that we, we probably carry patterns of skills. It's like yes. you, and you don't lose, your experience kind of adds up yeah. and then blends and then creates something new. The whole process is very creative. So, I mean, even even when I was um, was young, I would it, it give me some lights and a stage. Yeah, and, I was just going to say, bright lights know, and a stage bright lights is probably and a stage. what it. Yeah. And 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 the lights go on here, you know. So I've I've got that pattern somehow. I know there's yeah. various typologies that use rock star as a like for branding or something. Sure. And, and hey, here I am. You know, <laughs> what can I do? Yeah. And so that I think is part of it. Um, past lives, I think. I think the fact that I've ended up over my uh, sort of career in, in this world yeah. uh, in some very sort of hardcore spiritual teaching roles, if you mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. um, I think there undoubtedly, if you go down the past life route, have been lives that there's been work done that's made that mm. possible in this life. Yeah. Um, and, and certainly in my own experience of past lives, so to speak, that there's been me memories of times of, of being in very um, intense spiritual experience lives. So it's so like monasteries and, and th those kind of yeah. things. Or th so those all add up to, to who I am Today. showing up yeah. in this life. Yeah. So yeah, interesting question. That's yeah. like, you're getting me thinking. <laughs> yeah, Beth, that's great. Well, so in this life, yeah. now you've made this big leap um, earlier on. Were there big fears that you had of making such a, a, a different shift? I mean, you obviously had to have some kind of letting go of that other dream, if you will, or transforming it into different mm -hmm. types of bright lights and stage. Um, were there fears that you had? Not really. Okay. That, I mean, that sounds crazy, and it's not entirely true. So. It's like I'm are you saying. Holding, it. Are you hold out, holding out on us here on the on the big fears in life? No, no. But the, the thing is that the thing is I've always been. Um, I once had a, a Native American guy come up to me at a mind body spirit fair. This was right at the beginning, and he walked up to me, looked me in the eye, and said, "You've got crazy wisdom. You're Red Hawk medicine." Okay. And I'm like, "What does that mean?" Crazy wisdom. What was the medicine? Red Hawk. Red Hook. Red. Uh, there's a red, red tail. Rock. Red tailed hawk. Hawk. Hawk, the animal, the bird. Okay, well, it's, it's my the, English it's the accent. accent. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel Hawk, and he said, yeah. "What, what, the crazy wisdom from from those animals okay. is that they go into this dive after their prey, and they go into these crazy dives, and there's no way they should be able to get out of that dive. But they don't think and they don't care about that. They yeah. just go for it, and somehow, of course, they always manage to pull out of the dive. Hmm. Now, if you think about what I just described with setting the band up, yeah." That's exactly it. So, so part of me just I don't. I'm 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 so deliciously ignorant of the potential danger sometimes, and that's got me into problems in mm -hmm. times in my life. Yeah. That that I go kind of s straight into that half dive. Yeah. But I guess where the where the fears started to come in, or or the the real challenges in that department, it wasn't so much because I'm framing that around the journey of getting to start to, to teach and all the rest of it is where I went from teaching other people's work, so okay. I was teaching Brandon's work and the journey, okay. to when MPA, which I do now, the MPA process, okay. which is my own little baby, and having to step into that world, now that was yeah. where it was like, oh my F G. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not least of which, because it's like, is it gonna work? Are yeah. people gonna take to it? And there's a whole, I discovered, being under someone else's umbrella, you know, they're organizing the stages for you, the rest of it, to, to actually doing your own thing, yeah. whole other. Yeah, oh, well, no, yeah. yeah <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of that fear that I think my parents put into me, which was probably good and bad, but it was, if it succeeds, it's your fault, and if it fails, it's your fault. Yeah. And there's a lot of accountability that comes to that, and it can be sometimes a little bit suffocating, and so there is sort of a navigation, I think, of of having to swim through those those fears of it not happening, or, or just making a mistake, which yeah. I mean I don't believe we can make a mistake actually. Um, no, I or just make another know. choice. But yeah. yeah, okay. So you jumped from that into your own. Tell us a little bit about NPA. Okay, so the the transition happened because I was um, 
Well, unexpectedly, I say MPA came in answer to a prayer. Okay. Um, so I was teaching, I was on stages all over the world and, you know, practice full, doing journey work. I was Mr. Journeyman. Yeah. Um, and I was sat in a coffee shop um, in 2007 journaling and I sort of journal in the sort of conversations with God style, you know, it's sort of <laughs> and then yeah. answers come. And this prayer just happened. It's like, it, like same as we talked about the music, just was yeah. like, okay, okay, God, grace, universe, if there's something specific that wants to come through me in service to humanity, mm. let me know I'm ready. Mm. And it came through and I was I like, like that. oh, that was weird because I'm really in a fulfilled place. Why would, yeah. you know, why would I want to do that? And it happened, it was done. I let go of it, didn't think about it. It wasn't like there was an answer. It was just the, the yeah. prayer, prayer was there to be prayed. So I honored that. Right. And exactly a week later, which will be 12 years to the day on Tuesday, mm, so MPA okay. will be 12 years old. Um, again, I was journaling and I was processing some anger. Um, yeah. And again, the way the words came through me was, you know, say these simple words in relation to the anger. And the MPA process, which is six simple lines with a space to put in whatever that energy is that, yes. that you're working on, was born in that moment in its completeness. Interesting. And you know what? I want to talk about those simple lines. We're going to do a really quick break and we're going to come back and I want to hear more. Okay. Okay. Blossom Bliss products are designed to help empower pure love and purpose in your life. It's through the power of words, flowers, and symbols that our products assist you in creating a blissful life. The power of words in our mini mantra word bar necklaces assist you in setting and blossoming your personal intentions. The affirmation cards leverage the power of flowers by providing daily inspiration. And the power of symbols in our life journey bracelets are great reminders of the things that bring us peace, joy, and love. Products are made and blessed in Bali with love by Balinese artisans who work with empowered hearts. When you purchase jewelry with a bee charm, we donate to save the bees. Join us in pollinating the planet with love. Go to our website, BlossomBlissBally.com. Again, that's BlossomBlissBally.com. Okay, we're back with Joel Young, and we were just about to hear about the pearls of wisdom I think that you have and how we, would I, would I say reframe things with your system or uh, release things? How would I say that? I would say you profoundly shift your perspective in relation to whatever is going on, okay. which allows you to shift, I'm going to go on, allows you to shift your identity in relation to it, and that changes everything. Oh, I like that. Yeah, and I have done your, your I have listened to your talk. I haven't done your whole... Um, uh, workshop and seminars, but I but I got introduced to it. So and I actually carried it around my name tag because I thought it was so interesting. I saw yes. that. I thought that was great. Yes. Um, so let's tell the listeners exactly what that process is and and how they can use that. Okay. So to to begin with, I'd say it's called MPA non personal awareness. Is what okay. it stands for. Um, most people come to the MPA process as a simple way to stop taking things personally. So, and, and that really is, is where people meet it. And we tend to think of not taking things personally. Oh, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, if you Google not to take things personally, unless you find MPA, it, it's, it's yeah. gonna be a case of there's a whole bunch of things you have to realize and step through. Yeah. This process in about 30 seconds at the most um, does that magic job of getting you to really realize that something is not personal. Yeah. Now, when it first came through me and where the heresy came in is, mm -hmm. is I realized that this little process and the mechanism of taking things personally really goes to the root of so much. It's mm. threaded through. In fact, the mechanism of existence, you could say, is about taking things personally because when you take something personally, you're saying, that's me, that is. Yeah. So yeah. In, in the that's me, that is, that's great because then we can have a body, we can have things that mm -hmm. and by identifying with it, it matters. And the word matter is a great word because matter is about manifestation. Yeah. So what matters to you? So the, the process itself is six lines and the way that it works, do you want me to do the... I would love it, yes. Well, a really great way to do it is to... Are you up for... Sure, why not? You can ex be exposed <laughs> It's all here. about vulnerability. So there's two ways to use the process. Um, one is to let go of the yucky stuff and one is to let in the yummy stuff. Because sometimes we personalize things to ourselves. So you might have a label like, you know, I'm a 
I'm an idiot or something. And then that's somebody's given you that idea, yeah. you've taken it on, you've held it inside, and you're not letting it go. Yeah. So you've personalized it to you. And you said, that's me, that is. The other way, which I think would be fun to play with today as yeah. an inspirational thing, is when you personalize things to not me. Okay. So you exclude yourself. So they're the rich people, mm. I'm not, okay. yeah? The money's over there, it's not, that's not me. I'm not the person that has the million pounds. No matter how much I pray and ask and say all these things, but fundamentally, I'm not the person that has that million pounds. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm actually poor and proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> so the identification yeah. goes there. So um, there's two questions. That takes question two, to ask you a question which will elicit from you just, a, just a, an open chat um, in response to the question. And I'm going to be listening, and this is how simple it is, to what pops out to me. Right, but now it's a little bit different than how we did it before, no? Or is it the same? Because I had something that came to me after yeah. the workshop, actually, and I and I, I thought, oh, maybe this is really something that I could release or, or shift within me, mm -hmm. and, um, and maybe I won't even articulate it correctly. But one of the things that I think I've been really stuck on, after I left my big corporate life and my corporate career, is being a successful businesswoman. And that's sort of been my thing. Like, I want and need and have to be a successful businesswoman. And it's come to me several times, and it came to me actually after that workshop, that I'm actually not here to be a successful businesswoman. And I felt like there was an inauthenticity with myself as to what I thought I was here for and what I was projecting myself to be. Um, and there may be semantics in how I describe that, but I feel that I'm here to really share wisdom and that there was an element of business that I was too focused on. Does that make sense? And yes. can I use the model for that? I don't know. Yeah, in a sense, you've just done what I call a spew. So I'm listening to what you're saying. Okay, what popped you were, out? <laughs> you weren't even aware okay. that I was listening in that way, which okay. is good because you were unselfconscious in what you were sharing. Okay. You were just sharing what it was. Um, so in, in what you just said there, the thing that popped out to me was wisdom. Hmm. So it, it, again, it, in MPA, it's the w I always encourage you to not second guess it, not analyze it, not think, oh, wisdom, what does that mean? I think I'll take it deeper. You know, literally in all of it, wisdom is what popped out, which means that that's got traction in you. Mm -hmm. And as we went through the process, it'll allow, I imagine, it just to really become more embodied in you. But we'll see where it goes, OK? okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm just going to say six simple lines. I'm going to use wisdom in the in the gap. And you can, by okay. the way, download the process for yourself at, at my website, yeah, which is joelyoungmpa.com. Cool. Okay. Um, find it there. But here we go. You ready? Okay. Just repeat after me. Okay. This wisdom. This wisdom. This energy of wisdom. This energy of wisdom. This pure energy of wisdom. This pure energy of wisdom. Is not personal. Is not personal. This pure energy of wisdom. This pure energy of wisdom is not personal. Is not personal. This pure energy of wisdom. This pure energy of wisdom is not personal. Is not personal. And I am willing to experience it. And I am willing to experience it. To so just be really still for a moment, yeah. notice and allow what, if anything, is there. And when you feel a natural completion, just let me know. Okay. Okay. So, what did you experience? Um. When you were st having me repeat it, you know how our minds can multitask? I was thinking, no, this is not it. No, I was trying to say that I'm not a business person. It's not about the wisdom, right? <laughs> so like I was having this whole conversation, I'm listening, I'm repeating. And then as I quieted in that moment, it was, it was a deeper trust mm -hmm. of allowing the wisdom to experience the wisdom to just let it flow through. Yes. Right? As opposed to still judge myself for, well, am I delivering wisdom? <laughs> is my show, is Pollinating the Planet with Love the wisdom that I'm here to do, right? And it was, yeah, it, it took me out of my little mind of even, yeah, it took me out of my mind into the idea of experiencing something. And I think when we experience something, it's a powerful experience for ourselves, but then it also allows us to share it, right, in a yeah. way that then is very pure and mm. very 
easy, and so, not that it has to be easy or hard, but for others to have that experience through you, just like love, right? Like yeah. when you feel love, you just you just love. You don't you don't need at least in the beginning you don't judge it, right? So anyway, so I'm kind of digressing, but it all feels in the vein of what you just did for me, which was release an idea about wisdom so that I could embody and experience it. So yeah, in a sense that uh, my reflection or my my sense of what you're saying, my interpretation maybe, yeah. um, is that you just cleaned up that vibration. Yeah. So as you say, now you can express it much more cleanly and purely yeah. and that will include trust, but it just that's often what I see that the process can do. I mean, there's so many things that it can do, which we yeah. can talk about, but it's like um, just in cleaning up your relationship to wisdom such that it's purer, um, freer, mm -hmm. um, it's like you get out of your own yeah. way in yeah. relation to it and it can grow through you. The, that's image, a the image that's coming to me right now is, you know, sometimes when you have a pair of glasses on yeah. and they're foggy or there's yeah. like a, a smudge on it or something and so I got this image of, you know, just like wiping it clean and then having that crystal clear vision again, it feels like that's that's what the process does and that's yes, what you're saying. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Shifts your perspective. Yeah. Um, and, and the thing about that, and again, part of the, the heresy piece, the being yeah. a heretic, is that Again, I came from a world where it was strong, emotional, you were dealing with the trauma, you were you know, doing this stuff, and that's great. Yeah. But I found that these, these shifts with MPA, and I've seen big emotional I'm responses sure have, to yeah. it a, a lot, but sometimes it's those, those subtle shifts, but they make a huge difference because they are, they are working at such a deep level. Mm -hmm. And it's been such an amazing, MPA got 12 years old on Tuesday and when it popped out of me I was like oh this is a nice little you know thing it was yeah. nice working and, and my training was all emotional based yeah. oh, it probably helps you work with the emotions yeah. but we've had experiences in the MPA world of people who've had a pain-free childbirth using MPA mm. I mean WTF What's yeah. that about? Yeah. Um, people who've had two years of, de well, one particular example uh, of someone who had two 18 years of depression and in two minutes it just wow. it just went, it just absolutely went. Uh, we've had people who are bankrupt and then manifest, you know, like a hundred thousand pound mm. gift. All of the complexities of that just smooth out. Yeah. I mean, there's the, the things that, that I've seen that just, for me, blow my mind of this yeah. You talk about wisdom or trusting what comes mm -hmm. through you. It's like this thing pops out. I just honor my job of getting it out there. Yeah. And the feedback is so many things can change. And I think that's because, again, the mechanism of taking things personally is about identity. And when you shift an identity, even yeah. if it's a subtle, it doesn't look like a, an identity, then all of your emotions, all of your beliefs, yeah. and all of your behaviors shift in response to the shift in identity. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I love that. And yeah. I think one of the things that everyone was saying after your talk, it's not personal. Yeah. You know, it's not personal mm. because we do take everything so personal and we put it through that lens of judgment. So interesting. It really frees you up. If I can say, like, th that's my mission, right? My mission is to really wake up that perspective that it's not personal in people. But there's a way that I think, and it, it's good to ask you, is the way people were saying that in the room after doing the process and after mm -hmm. sharing that time with me, the, the energy behind those words, it's not personal, had shifted. So it wasn't just, oh yeah, it's not personal. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's just about them, not about right. me. It wasn't just, you know, it's not personal. <laughs> it's the, right. You know, the classic yeah. mafia one. Yeah. When people were saying that, they were getting the, at a fundamental, deep level yeah. in consciousness. Yeah. It's not personal, yeah. and that creates such, such a frictionless, agendaless, free-moving yeah. world. That's that's what I love about what MPA does over time because it's a yeah. practice ultimately. Yeah, and I felt like there was I don't know this word humor comes to mind a, a sense of humor that came into it of you know not that it was funny, but that sometimes we are funny in how we want to perceive something and when we shift it 
it seem, it has so much less energy that it is kind of humorous, you know? Yeah, I, there's, there's a lightness. I, I love that, that it's sort of an old cliche, but you know, so where, um, where there's laughter, there's God, where there's seriousness, run. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, there, there's a lightness, yeah. and I think w uh, as you use MPA over time, yeah. the masks come off. Yeah, that's what you're doing. You know, you might yeah. be working on this issue, that issue, da 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 da, da. And, and then this perspective, this fundamental non-personal perspective, wakes up, and then everything is kind of available. Yeah. So you live in this fluid world, and I think a lightness comes in, and I don't know, it's just me, but I I think people in the MPA community are pretty pretty light I mean we can all go into the deep spaces but it's like it is yeah. all kind of laughable yeah and that might that might trigger some people because there's some deep stuff yeah. and I'm not dismissing the human experience in fact MPA really honors the human experience of us all yeah. but as you can access the the lightness I think that's a beautiful beautiful yeah. thing how do you help people overcome the fear of letting go of something because there may be someone sitting out there that says okay I get it, but sometimes people are actually scared of these powerful tools that can help shift them. Mm. Do you have anything that helps them take that jump, or is it? Do you just believe that people come into your your workshops and the knowledge of this by alignment? I, I think there's some truth that you know, when someone is ready, they'll find it. Yeah. They might not realize that they're ready. In some ways, one of the things that's great about MPA is it's kind of non-threatening. So yeah. oftentimes I've done this and I've heard you know, the people who use MPA do this. You can just say to someone, do you want to just say some silly words with me and see what happens? Mm. Because there's no agenda in the MPA process. I'm not looking for a result, mm -hmm. which sounds crazy, but it's, it's really just say the words and see what happens. Yeah. And it might be that nothing seems to happen. I gave an example on the stage, if there's an example of someone, sometimes the answer isn't happening here. Yeah. It's happening in the non-local, which is the yeah. quantum physicist's version yeah. of not personal. Yeah. Um, the non-local things happening. So she she was sat at the dinner table with family. It was all kicking off. She thought, I'm going to just go to the bathroom. Sat down, did some MPA on it, stepped out. And she said it was like she'd stepped into a different universe. Because mm. somehow, in the yeah. space it took her to do some MPA and have a pee, yeah. It was as if everything had got resolved and she was in a different world. Yeah. But she didn't have any kind of, oh, I'm feeling my stuff and all the rest yeah. of it. It was just there. Yeah. Um, but in terms of people's fears of it, I think um, I do say it's kind of uh, with my tongue firmly in my cheek. Okay. I say it, it's, it's man, teenager, and old lady friendly. And I say that okay. because in my practice for years, yeah, like they're often can be tricky because they tend to be, again, using generalizations, mm -hmm. have to own that, um, generally sort of quite quite tricky to work with because yeah. they're resistant to having to go into their emotions and all the rest of it. Yeah. And with MPA, it will meet you where you are. It doesn't okay. require you to be emotional. It doesn't require you to figure out what your beliefs are. It just says, yeah. be you, yeah. express yourself, I'll notice what pops out, go through the process. And we'll, and we'll see what happens. It yeah. may be that they cry, but if that's not there for them, they maybe won't, yeah. or they'll be ready for just that yeah. thing. Does that make sense? It does. Now, um, I, I would think that it's better for someone to come to one of your workshops um, to experience this, because there is a technique to the listening aspect of it. I think anybody can probably do it, but because you you asked us to identify any words that jumped out and it's sort of an energy I think too right like just like what did I hear so uh, what's your thought on that I mean can people literally go to the website download this and then practice with someone who's not trained or they they can go to the website mm -hmm. get the sheet and they will be offered an opportunity to learn how to use it really well okay. which is the online training okay. Wonderful. and I think that's really important because uh, again heresy heresy being you know, flying in the face of commonly yeah. perceived dogma. Yeah. And in, if someone is already, say, a therapist or a coach or, or has some skill, that can be really good, but they will bring to the process the dogma of their modalities. Yeah. And that can interrupt the most profound work you can do with MPA. And people in general tend to fall into all sorts yeah. of traps with it, and they're gonna have questions around it because it doesn't make sense or they might use it with an agenda which is going to really interrupt the flow. Yeah. So people can take it, you know, I, give the, I gave the card out, yeah. on a card, they can get the, 
the the process sheet on the website it's there yeah. and people can do good work with it but if you want to make the most of the opportunity come and spend some time learn learn the yeah. underlying stuff of the technique it just helps you to, yeah. to grow deeper and then those who want to go sort of more into the advanced realm and, and want to use it really powerfully get into the yeah. underlying um, sort of philosophy of it that again they can deepen with that. Do they have to go to a, a physical location or do you also do like webinars or you know more e-modules? Well, there, there's an online course, so it's a self-paced. Okay. I mean, okay, the, the way that that course is is set up is it's called MPA basic training, a bit like in the military. You go, you get basic training. Yeah. I wanted to give something which people could, you know, easily sort of get hold of, easily afford. I, I want it in people's hands. I want them using it. Yeah. I want that energy waking yeah. up. But I recognise that just the words itself, you can either dismiss it or use it in a way yeah. which doesn't get the most from it. So in that training, the, the videos are pretty short because what they're doing is saying, D do this, yeah. this is what's important, okay. now go and practice it, and then come back and you can ask questions and you know as you can often in these, these courses. Okay. But that, that's the intention of that one. Okay. And then the advanced training as you go forward is, is more if you want to really get under yeah. the bonnet. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, and I think my, to, to kind of reveal what my plan for that, people have been asking for certified practitioner training. Mm. Um, I've got teacher training, it's a very different thing to, to get yeah. licensed to teach it. Um, but people want to sort of, you can, I, I say you can use it in your practice and you, you can yeah. share it. Um, but to really go in depth and have that practitioner. Because yeah. you know, I, in my coaching practice, um, I, really I think the thing that I teach more than anything else is at the heart of MPA, which is a genderlessness. How to meet yeah. a client without any agenda. And MPA is a perfect vehicle to, to learn those skills. There's so much more to it. Yeah. Um, plus, one last thing about going forward in that way is like what we did in in the talk is I call it an MPA frame. So there's the little okay. process, and then there's, then there's all sorts of different ways you can help uh, frame or, or or target it mm. in specific ways. Um, and so that would be part of the practitioner's yeah. training is to teach the 25 frames. Oh wow! Okay, so. wonderful. All right. Well. I have an, another question that's very much about pollinating the planet with love because I, I see some really wonderful links, but and everyone has a different interpretation, I guess, of what pollinating the planet with love means. How do you see MPA helping to pollinate the planet with love? I think, uh, as well, individually, as you work with the practice of MPA, mm -hmm. you invite it into your life and you do it, those masks fall away. Then your heart, your openness, your truth, your love is fully available and yeah. it is contagious. Yeah. So and, and it, the, each person that, that, that comes and dives in, I love them to bits and I love that they're there doing that because, yeah. and you see over time, yeah, yeah you get the, the big sm shifts, the small shifts, but the, the, the underlying, the real gift, if you really want to get something yeah. from MPA, engage with it, use it, because then that openness, and you can feel openness in someone, you know, yeah. you can you can feel that freedom. Yeah. And that, I think, makes, a, an, a, in our essence, arguably, is love. Yes. And so that's going to yeah. cross-pollinate it. And what kept coming to me is really helping to create those authentic connections. Yes. Which I think, globally, and especially in the United States, I see there's a suffering from not having the connections anymore we're so siloed in this so wonderful work that you're doing I'm super excited about it. I'm gonna learn more myself um, is there any other pearls of wisdom that we might have missed that we should cover off on or anything in summary from NPA or just from your personal life journey stories I think um, I'm kind of waiting for what's coming mm -hmm. in, in, in a really genuine what's what's true in this moment and maybe that's the answer to the question okay. is like just just Listen to yourself. Listen to yourself without judgment, without an agenda, and honor what is really there to do. Mm. And that, that's a practice in itself. Yeah. But the more you can stop and go, what's really here? Yeah. Because there's so many voices or energies that are at work getting us to go in those boxes and yeah. live in those boxes. When you get still and just, uh, just begin to listen, that's when you start to notice because those words that pop out mm -hmm. that's that's the divine moving yeah. and if you want to live a magical life then you're going to be living in the space where you're with the part of you where the divine is moving 
and if you have no agenda, then it gets really exciting. Yay, I love that. That's <laughs> super wonderful advice and a massive pearl of wisdom. Thank you so much for your time today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on. How exciting. Yeah, it is really exciting. I'm happy to have you all the way from the UK and in lovely San Diego. All right, so let's make sure we have all of your contact information, your website, and if you post on Instagram or anywhere else that they might be able to pick up your wisdom. Sure. So the best place to find it is joelyoungmpa.com. Um, pretty much on social media, I'm Joel Young MPA across the board, okay. uh, except YouTube where it's just Joel Young. Okay. So, um, so have a look around. Do come to the website. I yeah. really encourage you to just go along, give me your email so I know where to send it. Send, I'll send you the, the sheet, which is the MPA process. And then, you know, I really invite you to just engage with it at a deeper level. So if that training resonates, then go ahead and just uh, take me up on that offer. and. And I really look forward to welcoming you into the wider MPA world. Yeah, wonderful. And of course, you can always click below, and we'll put all the, the links and information there. And you can find me on Instagram at Queen Bliss B, because I'm oh. all about the flowers. And my website, BethBell.me, and you can listen to all of the previous episodes and, and this episode. And of course, give us a big like if you liked what we had to talk about today. So uh, until next week, wishing you bliss so that you too can help in pollinating the planet with love. Up next, when you like my page, Beth Bell Live, and join me each week as I invite a new guest into the mobile recording studio to help in pollinating the planet with love.